guys, are we podcasting? Are we podcasting are we? already? Oh, I thought I Because I had all this to... stuff I was going to say off camera, so I wasn't rude to anybody, but maybe I'll just say... Let's just say it on... Well, on microphone. I like to think about this podcast being a podcast first and a viewing pleasure second, but if you are desperate for viewing pleasure, you can go to YouTube and watch this. You must be really desperate, though, because I haven't showered in a long time, and it really shows and smells... When we started doing the podcast, we did start with a video part of it, and then we stopped, and I thoroughly enjoyed it, and then everybody said we have to do the video part again, and many of you asked to do the video part again, so I'm here, I'm amiable, but I'm not doing my hair, and I'm not doing my makeup, and I know that I always have 14 chins, and I'm just going to be fine with it. Yeah, I would say I'm working on it, but I'm not, so I definitely would prefer to never do the video element of anything. <laughs> what? Well, since that's where we started, well, that's not like what, you're really shitting no, on the whole that's, process. No, that's not what I mean. It's called the no makeup makeup look. Except I literally, well, today I do have makeup on, so fuck it. I have a mm. little bit of makeup on, but that's just so no one's alarmed by my rosacea that I have today. Guys. If so, you're listening to us, you can, this is the okay, hashtag I'm on sword th- podcast. This is called the Confident Women Podcast, <laughs> uh, hosted by Kristen and Jen of I'm on So That's hard. right. Uh, you can find us. Listen to my. I just had a snot bubble in my throat. You can yeah. listen to any. Sexy Woman uh, Podcast. Hosted anywhere you by, find podcasts. What am I supposed to say? You can listen to us wherever podcasts are listened to. You can also watch it on YouTube. Good luck. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. TikTok sometimes. Mostly just watching Twitter. TikTok. Mm. Y- you will find us watching TikTok. You will find us watching TikTok. Well, if that could be content, we'd be set. Just me I swear that's through. what most TikTok people do is they're like, I'm just going to all my whole page is going to be me reacting to other people. Well, that's literally a part of TikTok. I just haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> I don't want everybody to know what I'm watching. What's up? <laughs> thirst traps. Uh, oh, not yeah, all thirsty traps. One. Just a weird... My For You page right now is really all over the map, which I hate because then I have to like curate it so that you, when you get on there, you're like, why no, is she this watching? this is what's hilarious. <laughs> Her, our For You page is our For Kristen page. It's a, I'm like... It, everything's like house design that's all taupe. It's everything that's like taupe or beige, which I don't even believe in. So, I enjoy a modern, fresh, minimal look. And Jen's like, how many layers of wallpaper? Animal print. Can, can I get one a put on a wall? Thousand percent. Can if somebody does not walk into this room and have a seizure, I've not done my part of decor. I agree. Actually, my friend Lori, who I have not seen in like four years, came over to the house and she hasn't seen like anything Yeah, because, you know, pandemic and whatnot. But she was over like two Fridays ago and she <laughs> goes, Jen, this house is so you. And I go... Thank you. <laughs> and I don't know that she meant it as a compliment, but I 100%. That's weird. People say that, that about my house. And I'm like, you mean it's falling apart and it has a bad attitude? Yeah, me and my house match. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for noticing. Yes, Casey. This is episode uh, 94. Holy smokes, it's episode, episode 94. 94. Which means, you guys, my eyelashes keep sticking together. At, at episode 100, we're going to have a secret and super guest. Guess what? We better get planning that because we, get we planning. don't know who it is. And I haven't done the invitations yet. You know me. I am I am brave, but oh. I haven't had a night where I've I've tasted the old Ambien. So I've... Oh. Uh, I've lost a little courage, but I am going to reach out. I'm going to reach out to some cool people for number 100 episode, our first guest interview ever. Yeah, and we're our, really and promoting uh, this. And hopefully somebody really s- sassy. Let's hope so. It could be one of our mailmen yeah. or, or who our knows. Husbands. It depends. And share it. Casey's given us freaking, stop telling me to steal third, man. I can, she's like, I don't know why she like lip she's stuff just, us because she's simply I cannot. flipping you off go. right now, Kristen. That's all what? that's happening. Casey, she's, say it. So share it with your friends. Share, share this it with podcast. your friends. We want a bunch of reviews. We want a bunch of people, new people coming into the podcast to celebrate the 100th episode. Great. Did everybody hear that? Did everybody okay. hear that? Our mom's so yelling at us. We want you to share, rate, review. We want to review it. We want to blow out it. this 100th episode in yeah. a big way. We're going to have a cake. 
We're gonna, are we? Are we? Let's have a cake. Let's have a cake. That's a good idea. We're going to do it topless because... A topless cake? Is that just We're going to no do a topless cake ice cream? and a topless podcast. We're going to podcast and interview this person. Whoever this person is, we're going to bring them in and we're not going to wear a shirt. I Jason Momoa, if you're I'll listening. I'll get all embarrassed. I did see on Jos- Jason Momoa's Instagram page the other day. Th- do you see he... What? What do you mean did I see? What the fuck do you think I did? That do? woman that said a f- <laughs> had the fuck you Momoa shirt on that he's... <laughs> I don't know what it means. There's some history there, but I love it. You guys, sorry. I'm going to stop swearing. I'm not. Just right out I'm, of the gate. I'm I, coming I, in hot listen. with the F-bombs. But it's that kind of day. Uh, I would like to tell you about a mom fail that I did, that I figured out on what? my own. Okay. That I had kind of a an epiphany. All right. So I, you know, do you ever have those moments as a mom where you're like, yes. mm, I learned something here. Like, yeah. as I step back oh from the situation, God. I realize I claim a little bit of fault in this. Of course. You play this for my children. I'll be like, I did not say that. I'm a, yeah. I deny all of it. Yeah. I deny it. Um, but so my daughter, Eleanor, who I know is her. feisty and funny, um, she had a play date on a Friday. And we had a, a planned birthday party on Saturday. And so on Friday, she had a little play date, and I was taking the friend home. And the f- little, little girl, Charlie, she's so sweet. They're very good friends. She begged if Eleanor could stay for Aww. a sleepover. And literally, I was so unprepared that Eleanor wasn't even wearing shoes. She had hmm. changed into her pajamas to drive Charlie home. She was not wearing shoes. We were in the car. They begged they literally were like Eleanor like produced tears like please mommy please let me stay I will do whatever you want and I was like oh I felt so much pressure and the parents were like we're really happy to have her and I was like oh yeah you don't want to be like I could buzz kill. watch like three episodes of the flight attendant all by myself and so I was like well Finn's home but he's watching YouTube and ignores me so I I was like um okay so literally just let her go inside no shoes just her pajamas and then i should have known that they wouldn't get to bed on time like if you're me when you're a kid i would fall asleep at eight get up at six and have coffee with the parents but i was never really a number one request for sleepovers but eleanor got home the next day and we went to this other birthday party and she was a disaster she was Uh, tired she felt sick to her stomach we had to leave early the parents had planned this party at like a trampoline park which was you know they paid for her spot and I felt like I really Sorry, messed up. I, I should not that... have allowed her to stay. So that's a new rule. Like if she has a birthday party or some event on on a day, you cannot have a sleepover the night before. That was one of those like moments as a parent. I was like, ah, this should have been in play, this rule. And I didn't know it until it happened. Is that so boring? Is that my life? What? No. That, I mean, that's – I totally under – I mean, Should we talk about hot things I did in my 20s that I relive in my head by myself? Everything's fine. Well, uh, my son is – uh, we're detoxing from the iPad a little bit, and he's like, uh, has these like threatening requests <laughs> where like, I can tell the under like <laughs> tremors. I can tell that the underlying request is, if you don't let me do this, then I should get to play mindless games on the iPad. You know, yeah. I know what he's saying, and he just out of the blue the other day goes, "I want to spend the night at Owens tonight," and I'm like. So do you want to talk to his mom first? Yeah, or just you want to, show up. And literally, you've never stayed the night at anybody's house before. So what kind of a... Did you let him? No, I'm not going to call I his know, mom and thing. be like, hey, can I... <laughs> I'm going to do it I'm on a almost, night I got plans. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm almost at that point. Like, can you take Finn for two days? Just two days. That's all I'm asking. Fifth grade. We're in the thick of it, man. Yeah. Fifth grade. You know, anything that has ever been disclosed to your kid... It's from a fifth grader. And it, by the way, when your kid is a fifth grader. God, <clears> fifth graders me. can be straight up evil if They're I remember fifth grade. myself. It's, that's the winning, that's the, that is the peak of um, everything kind of crappy is a fifth grader. And I mean that with love. Everybody was a fifth grader. Everybody will be a fifth grader. And my son will be past fifth grade. And I will cry at his culmination, mostly because we will have realized we made it through. Well, you have to – okay, f- I do want to talk about uh, dumping kids off places because yeah. I, I have some major babysitter situations Ooh, happening. Yeah. <clears throat> but w- will you explain that to me? Like what you're – because we're starting to see a little bit in my third grader weeks away from being fourth grader 
where there's a lot of eye rolling and oh. sighing and like, oh. I just don't get stuff. So is it that kind of oh, stuff? Oh, God. Yes, it's all of it. It is. It's also a bag of lies. Like my son is going to retell stories and I'm going to be on his heels and I'm going to be like, actually, that's not how it happened. <laughs> that's 100% not how it happened. He is like, oh my God, they're so critical at fifth grade. Mm. They're critical of mom mostly oh in fifth grade. I'm like, I would just like to come to the table with some really strong comments about your father, but nobody's picking up on those. But I like don't hit it out of the park on one dinner and I hear about it. Like, save it. Oh, the eye rolls, the indignation. Everything you wear is embarrassing. Like, my oh God, son. My kids, everything they wear is embarrassing to me. So my I'm son a wore an outfit. That. They went to a Dodgers game. And I was like, this is special. Like, you don't get to go to a Dodgers game very often. My son wore, and big no-no in our family, he wore slides. We don't wear slides. You don't wear open-toed shoes to a to a Dodger stadium. God, no. You could step on a needle. And no. You, absolutely. And you know what? They're too small. So head. his toes are hanging <laughs> over the top. His heels are over, hanging over the back. It looks like they're toddler slides, but he loves them so much he won't get rid of them. Yeah. And they was wearing Bart Simpson socks. I was like... Don't you understand we live in a world of cameras? Like, you're going, it photographed. Uh, just, Hold you guys, on. I can't. Basically, what you're saying is your son dressed exactly like my husband to go to that Dodgers <laughs> game. 100% That's right. basically his uniform. I do. Can I just say I'm about to uh, make a mythical creature spoiler right now? So get kids What's away. That? A mythical creature. We're going to talk Santa, a tooth fairy. Uh, oh, yeah. So. Mythical creature. I don't want to give away any of their tricks. I thought you were going to literally come up with a mythical creature. I thought you were going to be like, do you guys hear about the warlord Zergan? Well, two things this reminds me about, because it's really hot in my mind right now, is that, so Delilah lost her two front teeth, her upper, it's adorable. Like the one, it was just hanging by a thread for like Mm -hmm. five weeks. It was incredible that it wouldn't come off. And then this is how it came off. My husband picked her up to hug her and it like rubbed on his jacket and just came straight out. The other one came out when she bit into an ego and it didn't even bleed in the you that already thing had been hanging on just by the plaque of the other two you can literally like holding hands you can already see the other tooth that's growing it's in. it's growing in yeah my kids just don't have that like fascination with losing their teeth but my daughter did say this to me well the tooth fairy brought um all these little like uh, doll yep. sized things and i was like well but weren't they like fairy sized things like little fairy sized toys and she goes well, it seems like there's stuff that would go with a doll. So I hope the tooth fairy brings me a doll. And I was like, number one, don't lose a tooth at 8 o'clock at night if you want. Uh, You're lucky some you kind get of, a, yeah. like, ham sandwich. You're, yeah. Daddy went to Walgreens and CVS in order to find some little tchotchkes for you. But You guys are better parents than me. I just put it in a Ziploc. This is what my husband did. He's wears slides. He has a problem. He will not get out of... He will not walk anywhere without his slides on. His Adidas, his Adidas slides, as he likes to call them, just to annoy me. House shoes. But at least he's wearing them as house shoes, not as the shoe. He's not wearing them all the time. I mean, if he's got a meeting, he'll put on a lace. They're so disgusting. And it like spray. I'm like, you got it. They stink. You got to spray them out. He'll 409 them and leave them in the sun. Also, I have yet to see. I've seen like two men with feet that I'm like, okay, you can showcase those. But most of the time I'm like, when was the last time you cut your toenails? Like the the top of your toe is not supposed to look like a pool cue. Like what is. I don't know how he does it, but my husband's big toe. It's enormous. Number one, you could show a movie on this this (laughs) toenail. It looks like he trims them with pinking shears. It's like all zigzag. They're so gross. And he always wears those slides. So last night I go, okay, you you got to – she also said to me, I think that the tooth fairy is taller than I imagined. So I wondered if she was hinting to me that she saw me last time and doing you're short? some business. No, I think she thought the tooth fairy is like a little, little tiny fairy and that she was – I sort think of like Delilah indicating. is fully aware of who the tooth fairy is and she is puppeteering the 100%. tooth fairy to get – she's like uh, the – Tooth fairy should bring me a cross body bag, you know. Exactly. I know. Well, that's what I would do. Yeah. But I so I told my husband, I'm like, oh, well, evidently I'm no good at this. So you you go bring in the little tchotchkes that you got, and you put them on the table. And t- oh shit! I don't even know if he took the tooth. Now I'm thinking about it. We better check. But anyways, he put on his slides to do it. And I go, why don't you just put on roller skates, man? You gotta be quiet yeah. when you're doing tooth fairy stuff, and you have to to walk. 11 feet down the and hall to her room. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
<laughs> so <laughs> now today she's going to be like, oh, the tooth fairy has very smelly, loud yeah. feet. The tooth fairy has a club foot on the right side. I don't understand what's going <laughs> on. Would she going... cut her toenails? Would she should... Yeah, shears? you could just hear like the dragging of the toenails. My husband wears... <laughs> oh, I got to show you a video that Addison sent me for you. Um, My husband wears slides like he... Like, there's shame in it. It's weird. He's so... My husband is weird about some stuff. He, like, puts on slides and he wears them through the kitchen like he's not wearing pants. Like, he looks at you like, like, is this... Am I allowed to wear... I'm like, they're just shoes, man. I don't... It's a weird, like, deeply Catholic, oh. weird, shamey, I think nude thing. I'm from, like, your feet are naked. The rest of you isn't. He's from Houston. They wear very nice shoes yeah. in Houston. It's so a I big it's, downgrade on yeah. his... If there's not, like, a they, sock and a tie and a thing and a deal, he's like, feels like it's a little bit nudie. Well, I'm like, you're not wearing porn on your feet. I think Colin has pretty nice feet, but, like, not showcase ready. Like, not mm. showcase feet, not pedicured feet. No. The, and, and also, he got he has those calluses on the back of his heels, and I'm like, where does the flip-flop start and the feet begin? He's got to get him a cheese grater for <laughs> his birthday or something. He, I mean, I honestly, I don't know one dude that I don't think that has all of his toenails. That's disgusting it's on so true. every level. I, they just don't care, though. I would get I would get like a press on if I lost a toenail. I had a friend that had hammer toes, and so they were toes that dipped all the way under. So oh, no. she made she, fake toes on top of her she toes. Paint, she would paint. That's got to hurt, man. I know. She had to go have surgery. I'm not an orthodontist Holy. or an orthopedist. No. Nope. You're not excellent. any of these things, obviously. Ex- exterminator? What is that? An ortho... Orthopedic... Well, uh, an ortho... Ped- pediatrist. Pediatrist. Pedi- pediatrist. But I don't know. Maybe you'd go to an orthopedic surgeon for that. I don't it's know. It's joint care. related. I don't know. I'd I tune out. I was like, not a great story. My ADD's taken over. Anyways, kids run for my money, not prepared for this. Yeah. Uh, because they're already... My kids are already mean to me. Like, my... My daughter's already pulling Hannibal Lecter mind shit on me, so there's no way I'm going to be able to handle a fifth grade version of my daughter. Fifth grade is just a tricky time, and you just have to stay the course. That's what I've learned. Like, literally go in, let them throw shit your way, try to be zen about it, don't take it in, don't listen to them. You're going to lose your shit a few times. That's okay. It's fair because they wear you down. Yeah. But for the most time, you're just like, get to that Get to sixth grade. And I'm not saying sixth grade's going to be a picnic, but fifth grade has been such a disaster on so many levels that I feel like I'm going to know what to expect in sixth grade. Yeah. Like, body odor and weird hair does not freak me out, but the 37 different we versions of indignation. Be if you've got problems with Like this, that. this eye roll, like this. Oh, oh, I know what that means. Okay, yeah, that wait, let, me, let me do a couple. I'm going to okay. do a couple eye rolls right that, now. I know if you're listening, this is going to be different, but I'm going to I'm gonna take well, a... Well, let me describe that first one if you're a parent. No, every human has seen me. this. Where that, you, were just, you were just doing the, oh my God, I can't believe you're that stupid that yeah. you don't understand what I'm saying. That's yeah. what now, that eye roll give me, was. Give okay. me like a totally normal like piece of advice a mom would say to a kid. Hey, don't run into traffic. Oh, gosh. I did 30 in one sweep. Holy that was cow. a rainbow. That was uh, Okay, give me another one. He was also repulsed in that moment, yeah, too, yeah. which I really... Okay, uh, tell me about I'm how you did something. My hands tell me you something me you looks. did when you were younger that you were actually good at and not rolling a joint. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really racking my brain for this. Okay, just something you were good at. Uh, uh, speech. Wow. That's a who farted the face, but that in the face of a fifth he, grader is like, you never like, did speech. That's like, he hates every, he hates you in that moment. He doesn't like me at all, it's, but he does. He's just push pull. And I get it. I think at the end of the day, like tonight we're having date night, just he and I. Oh, how cute. Oh yes. But that's not what he said. He was like, yeah, well, can you just, can we do something fun for once? Oh, and I'm for like, once. You can, oh, my. I'm sorry. You've been to Hawaii. You've been to a really nice hotel in Detroit. Why do you complain? You've been given everything. I've been saving your whole life for your college. 
well, I'll take it away. I swear to God, I'll take it away. When we were fighting our son with about the whole iPad thing, he literally said this. Well, here here was the hilarious, not funny, but it, you'll see why it was hilarious in the moment. He, My husband took the kids to play tennis for like an hour <laughs> so that I could finish up some work that we were doing. My son came in on his own. It was a little bit early, I could tell, and I was like, "Uh oh, you came in fast." And uh, oh boy, I knew this wasn't going to be good. And he goes, "Um, I think I figured out why I like to be on the iPad so much." And I go, "And why is that?" And he said, "Because I'm not happy in my surroundings." Literally, we have a pool. I feel like listen. It's going to crap out in a matter of months, but it's a luxurious pool to me. To some, it might be not luxurious. Look, it's a wonderful pool, especially because we had one of those oscillating sprinklers, you know, that was like the foot, 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 yeah. foot. And, and, it, and it would you, like pelt your butt with, yeah. you'd have little bruises. You'd try to sit on it and then it would, yeah. But we have this pool and I'm so excited about it. And in the summer, it's so fun and I put Finn in timeout for doing something. This is a while ago. So this is pre-fifth grade. So he's in the pool. He's got his arms up on the side. He's mad that he can't swim the way he wants to because he's probably being like reckless and I lifeguard the shit out of him. He's got his arms up and he's like, why does my life have to be so hard? Oh my gosh. I'm like, you do you re, you do realize tell me that you got your, video it, of that to show at his wedding someday. I, my husband and I started laughing so hard. <laughs> we were laughing so hard. We were like, "You just have no idea what a shithead you're being right now." And it's yeah. fine. You can. We're here to guide you. We're here to help you. But whenever somebody's like, "It's just hard not to be their friend," I'm like, "Not, not for me." That's I, I don't want that. I don't want that peer group. I do explain to my kids. I'm like. A huge part of my job I consider to be keeping you from being a jerk. Totally. That's what motherhood is. No one tells you that because you think that you're like, I don't want you to be a jerk. And I also don't want you to be, you're like, like with Eleanor, she's, she's so different. But there's things with her that I'm like, all right, like what was that expression that we both read that we really like? Like don't let the wind blow you don't let every wind don't be blown about by every wind don't be blown about by every wind i'll never get that right i'll be like don't blow it if you wind it whatever don't be blown about <laughs> Who by am every i not wind. supposed to blow yeah I forget. <laughs> that's another lesson that we'll have later on <laughs> uh oh no i wasn't thinking about, I was thinking about you you know what those are and jen will take that conversation but i have a that to healthy list college um <laughs> the i think that with her i'm like hey man you like not everything needs to be emotional like like fodder to like kind of fall apart because yeah i believe that like being sort of emotionally healthy is equally important to not letting boys have like tantrums and it become like if you're feeling something you can feel it right yeah but i sort of feel like don't let everything like become this bigger thing yeah i don't care if you're a boy or a girl like don't yeah. let it like derail you and sometimes eleanor in her very irish way will be like everything's terrible yeah and i'm like come on like you got to have perspective. And I, I 1,000% need the advice. I wish that, like, the um, objectivity that I can have towards my kids. And I do think it is, it's like, it's not laziness or lack of concern. It's benevolence where I'm, like, evaluating what they do and I'm trying to help them make easy decisions to correct their behavior. So it's not like, oh, in this one-off instance, you should do it this way, but, like, give them overarching advice in their life. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. not like you don't have to think too hard in every moment. You can be like, well, I know I shouldn't put put my bad mood on somebody else. Right. Like, just like basic overarching rules that, like, cover the majority of situations. You're doing what, way better than me. I'm like... And this is what everybody says. I just can't wait till he has his own kids. Oh, yeah. Because there's been many calls that I've called my parents and I was like, um, I think I need to apologize what I said at the Wagner party circa 1989. <laughs> that wasn't very nice. That wasn't nice. Or when I would like, fair, my mom would like walk through the house naked and I'd be like, Ugh! but yeah. that didn't make her feel good. But also happens to us all. She would go down and like unload the dishwasher if you let her. Like, <laughs> Ah, Terry! Like, <laughs> Whoa! She'd always have on underpants, but 
half the time, no bra. I'm like, come on. Oh. We obviously are aware of the fact, too, that, like, this is all a part of normal childhood totally. development, although I think all of us read a lot of baby books, but when you get to tweens and teens, you're like, forget it, man. I don't have yeah. that time or energy to devote to reading a book. You're just going to be an asshole. Just so you can get that on a bumper sticker, yeah. right? It's just a phase. It is. And I remember being a jerk. I like, was awful. And and I don't like I don't think either of our kids I oh. would like to say are anything at, at least near to what I was cuz I remember my mom saying one time, "Who could also be a jerk?" Yeah. But she would say like at the height of like my parents' divorce where yeah. it was like Was that fifth grade? Fourth uh, grade. Fourth grade. Yeah. Mm. It started getting bad like third grade, but it was like the height of it was fifth grade and it was like emotions. I had this horrible haircut like my Aunt Karen. I was like Haircuts. I looked That's like me a boy. too. I looked like a realtor. Well, that was, you know, at least they don't have to contend with that, yeah. you know, but that's, you know, I like. Fifth grade is a tough time. It was hard. And my mom said, like, why are you, why do you say these mean things to me? And I remember saying to her, in a moment of clarity, and yeah. I don't even think it was that clear, I said, because you're always around you're yeah, here you're and, supposed and to your mom i know what i was saying was like you're my safe space to be this like you're always gonna love me <laughs> 30 years down the road <laughs> let's talk about that but i mean in the moment is the thing yeah. is you're like my mom loves me and i have to get this out and i know i can bounce it off this person yeah. and it's safe yeah. now that doesn't mean she's like got nerves of steel and she's like not gonna get angry because really maybe she feels bad or sad that she spent her entire day devoted to you and you're like being mean but it's like that's how you know they love you kind of is that they can do it that they feel safe to like to yes to give it to you you know like and 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 i was exactly the same way in fifth grade my mom made me start seeing our school counselor and she gave me a book that said how to knock the chip off your shoulder (laughs) terry it was green and there was an animated person with like a chip literally getting off the shoulder. And it was like, how to switch your bad attitude to good. And I was like, what kind of shit is this, man? Hey, Terry, where's your book? Like, I was t- I was tough. But I was also showing signs of ADD and I was having like a, ho- a rough go. But outside of that, my behavior, I was always a good student and I was always really polite. I would have never been impolite to anyone yeah. around me. I was not mouthy, nothing. But to my mom, I was tough. And she would say, you know what? I love you, but I don't like you right oh, now. Oh, yep. And I was like, no skin off my nose, sister. I know you're going to be here tomorrow. Yeah. But it was it was just, I also think that it's very natural for a kid at this age to be defiant and to be a little rude to mom because there's a vulnerability with mom and you feel safe with her and you want to just sort of go under her wing, you, but you won't grow and you won't go into the world if you haven't established. No, you have it's to. It's a weird sign of independence is what it, I'm saying. It totally is. But at the same time, you're like, I, can, I can't trust you yet. Like there is no way you're going to give a fifth grader the same independence that you would give somebody two years older. Two years from like fifth grade to a seventh grader feels like worlds apart in my mind. There's still fifth they're graders so, are still. Oh my God, every month matters. It's almost like when they're the twins. think that growing up. No, and it, and it definitely is like, but if you think of like what the oldest kid in the class looked like as opposed to like the youngest, like you look in at high school grade, kids down and you're like, that guy looks like he's a, a professional football player or something. He's a sophomore or yeah. something. Like, like it's, when did you get a goatee? It's so like vast. It is. Every, I remember my son when he was <laughs> doing a uh, rec uh, at oh the my re- gosh yeah he was doing like rec <sighs> basketball and there was a kid who was four who had been four for a while and my son was about to turn four or it was like yeah. it was months of a difference I mean this kid number one his dad played basketball or something like that and he's just a beast he had like a V in his back yeah. the kid did he was yeah. like slamming he got, like, yeah he, he, he was dunking. so big was crazy and I went up to the coach and I was like is, is my kid okay? Is yeah, like, and, and that guy loses an elbow or like runs too fast next to my kid. It's just But I also had in my stitches. head, I'm like, well, they're about the same age, so they should be fine. But the, the coach said to me, every month makes a difference it at does. this age. It so does. like by the end of it, my son could like carry a ball without tripping onto his face. But like to begin with, he couldn't. And I yeah. think it's the same when they're in those like teenage years because it's like – 
their toddlers, it's week by week, and then they're learning to read, and then all of a sudden they're like, uh, it's all facial hair yeah. and everything. And right now Attitudes. where it's pre, it's like pre-adolescence, it's pre-puberty, it's like all those things are starting to light fire. You know, like yes. they're like percolating and like some kids are percolating very early and some are like not at all. Like on Finn's baseball team, it's, um, I forget the ages, it's fourth and fifth grade, right? So it's 11 and 12. You want to see? Yes, please. But are you going to pull it? Okay. No, I got it. I was hanging. A fourth grader and a fifth. No, I'm sorry. It's fifth and sixth grade. A fifth grader, the youngest or the yeah. least like to start sort of developing right. to the kid who looks like he's 35. Yes. You, it is unbelievable. Yeah. There, There is a little, there's a guy on our team and he's such a good little baseball player, but he is small. He's going to be like a future Jose Altuve. And then there's a kid I'm like, are we certain that this kid is 12? Because yeah. I'm... I'm not so sure I didn't see him drive up here. I need to see a birth certificate with a raised seal on it, okay? Well, he is could fake a lot of this stuff. Literally, and not just tall, thick. Yeah. Like, and, but then they're so all so sweet. They're all still such, like, little baby boys. And I see it in, like, perfect example. They were all um, in the dugout, and I tweeted this, that Coach Colin walked <laughs> up and said, hey, you guys can chant, and you guys can do cheers. It'll build your your team morale and also intimidates the other team. And so everybody got together and they were like, yeah, let's, you know, they have these chants and cheers and they were like, let's sing a song. And coach was like, yeah, that sounds great. And then they like looked at the picture and they were like, let's do it. We don't talk about Bruno. No, no, no. Menacing. We don't. And I was like, God, there's such babies. Listen to that. Is that me creaking? There's such little baby boys. I was honestly going to say, uh, they should learn the haka, but that's almost too menacing, isn't it? Yeah, I think they would literally just haka lungy, and then it would be over. They would, it, they would get distracted. I'd love to see the moms in the stands doing that, though. I give Finn a very hard time, especially when we're talking about it in places like this. But there are moments that I see this kid that's like bubbling into this young man, yeah. and I'm happy with with who he is. Yeah. He's ornery as hell. He, yeah, he is ornery, and that is in my blood, and that is going to be something I deal with. And I'm always there to be like, okay. It's all fun and games, but if you go too far, then you're not going to look like if you're celebrating too much when you score in sports, you're going to look uncool if it yeah. becomes too boastful. So I'm going to be here to pull you back. And like, it's never fun to have someone be like, Ugh, you're telling me how to Ugh, I I can't even celebrate. Sorry, like, part of my job. I got to humble you up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I got to humble you up and remind you that like not everybody likes it when you wink at them. Yeah, I worked for that guy for a long time who never got the humbling he deserved. So was it an upper management position? It was a middle management position. Okay. And oh, it was just really, I could go into that, but I I'm won't. I'm just saying like middle management, it's, I'm fine with that as long as he's happy and he's not a brat. I also think this about the kid's. Like, I mean, mine are a little bit younger, but the ages that they're at right now is that they're going to have opinions about stuff now. And that's good. It means they're, like, critically thinking they're, about yes, stuff. Yes, that's a good word. They can um, they can have a difference of opinion. And sometimes when they question, like, why is it safe for me to do this but unsafe for me to do that, I appreciate that kind of thinking. I just don't want to deal with it in the middle of a grocery store. That's exactly right. I'm like... It's your approach. Like, don't do it when I just said not to do it. And I don't want to fill in the dots all the time. Like, just just yeah. because I said sometimes, so. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it's just it. because I said so. Yeah. Right? Like, exactly. You don't want to do it in the middle of a grocery store. I'm happy to have a conversation about it later. Maybe I'm not happy to have a conversation about it later. Yeah. But I don't want to have the conversation right now. And I might just make you wear dark glasses all the time so I don't have to see what shitty thing your eyes are doing. Yes. While I'm having a it's conversation like, with you. It's unbelievable. Uh, uh, oh, it's so! Uh, I have such like a physical response to it. I don't like it. Although I'm really good at rolling my eyes. You are really good I, at it. I it's, can be. I know. I know because I perfected it in fifth grade. You know what? All Terry could do is taplessly load the dishwasher to combat <laughs> your behavior, and I understand it now. She was like, "You can roll your eyes at me." Well, what about when she just this visited two weeks ago and was tapless? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, she she She's would like. Well, you know, Finn, this worked on your mother. Yeah, this worked on your mom. <laughs> I I would tell her my 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 bras in the dryer. Shut up! I'm gonna unload the dishwasher because I'm multitasking. I've got things everything. to do. I can't tell you how many. I've times. got eggs and grand scratch. 
Like my brawn. I've had to twisty, iron twisty, twisty. something for somebody, and I didn't have time to get the shirt on. I yeah, mean, just oh part of God. life. You it's guys. part of life. Uh, well, th- I guess we just uh, started to unpack fifth grade. Yeah, and well. um, culmination is in three weeks from now. So as I start bawling and thinking of um, my son being so little and now so big yeah now that we're doing middle school there's like a fifth grade culmination we're not doing middle school yet i'm not prepared yet i need a minute well i know but i'm just saying like it it, elementary school ended at sixth grade when When i was a kid yeah it did yeah and there was no that was no bells and whistles or ticker tape parade at the end of sixth grade it was just like here read this book in case you get your period over the summer i know i don't know when that Here's the thing. That could have already happened. They could have already done the talk at the school, and I just don't know because that's how uneventful my my son thinks school well, is daily. I think if you start broaching that subject, you're going to see a lot of eye no. rolls. I'll be like, <laughs> Finn, what would you like to discuss on date night? Let's talk about periods. Periods. Like, so he was really sweet the other day. I said, hey, I this is – way too much information but this is the kind of young man i'm trying to raise is we are very open about periods we don't want to have any stigma to them because i think it's as important for him as it is for eleanor totally he needs to be the guy that when he's dating someone he could go to the store and buy him tampons and there's nothing in his head that feels icky about that or i'm tired of that like we just need to yeah like so i you know i'm like um, Finn, I'm I'm on. He nobody gives me any space in the bathroom, so I always make the announcement. Nobody come in. I'm on my period. I need a minute. And then um, I was like, I had cramps or something, and I was like, ugh. And he's like, Mom, is your period hard? Are you having Aww. a hard time? I go, Yeah, I really am, buddy. And he goes, He's like, Yeah, it seems like that's really hard for for girls. Aww. I'm really sorry that you have to deal with that. That's sweet. Can you make me some fish sticks? Yeah, get up off the couch. <laughs> And yeah, make me some food. I don't want him to feel weird about saying the weird word period, and I don't oh. want him to feel weird about that. Like he d- he's like a tampon is icky or no, you no. Know, I don't want him to feel like that. I want him to. That's be- good that he's not. We're talking about that stuff too. I think the harder one is uh, to retrain my husband in that I'm like, it is a lot for girls to deal with in that like, because man, I'm this is a, could be a whole other episode, but I feel like. If my daughter has a hard period, I'm going to put her Ooh. on the pill or whatever that needs to happen that's going to make Same. it easier for her. Same, because I don't know why we feel like we have to suffer. I, I don't, don't either. Know. I don't either. You don't. And I said to my husband, I'm like, I want you to think of like the hardest s- baseball, softball game you've ever had to play, your finals week, your whatever. And then imagine doing that and trying to not bleed through your pants. Yeah. Like, that is what teen yes. girls deal with. And I, I feel like introducing our sons to that like at an early age is good. Yeah, because it should make you feel like women are tougher than you're giving them credit totally. for on all levels. Because yeah. guys aren't like putting on their football pads and also putting on a maxi pad. Right. They're not like thinking like, oh, do I have enough coverage to not embarrass myself when I put on my band pants? Like, and they would say that like it was a, a weakling thing to do, but it's like, uh, no, that's harder. You yes, know? that's what I mean. It's like really something to contend with. And I hope... As we're raising our kids and they start, you know, going down the path of puberty, that there's like kind of an acceptance of all things that are happening and that it's normal. But, you know, at that age, everything is so – do you remember like everything embarrassing was like on a hundred of the Richter scale? Yes, So that's the hard thing to get in front of because right now, like I think if I like bled through my pants, I'd be like, well, shit. Of course. I still need to get – the 17 things left on my grocery list. Yeah. What are you going to do? <laughs> but as a kid, as a young girl, that is very embarrassing. And you don't want to feel, you don't want to feel like everybody is looking at you like it's equally embarrassing. You know, like yeah. I just feel like there should be some level of like, let's take the stigma out of it. I agree. This I one's keep, not. I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm making noise. I know. It's. Oh. I'm gonna, can I sit like this? Is That's this fine? I don't know how it's yeah, happening. And Jen, be careful about rubbing the bottom of your... Yeah, stop rubbing the bottom of your... Bottom? <laughs> stop yeah. rubbing your bottom. Can I rub the bottom of Kristen's bottom? I can. <laughs> sorry, those sounds you hear are the ambient noise of the I'm Sorry They're, podcast. Uh, there's ASMR. Um, I, so I read about this woman. She's our hot flash. When I tell you why, you will. it will make sense. Flash. Hot flash. 
so there is a Sherpa, a guide at Everest, who is a woman who has climbed Everest 10 times as a Sherpa. They carry all the heavy stuff. They're the guides for the rich dudes that say they've climbed Everest. Okay. She's done it 10 times, you guys. And That's... all I could think of, this is, woman is a complete badass. People have died trying to do it one time, and she's done it for, like, probably a minute. Also carrying paycheck. somebody's crap. And also at least probably two or three of those times fully Younger on her period. period. I mean, yeah. <laughs> talk about a hero, you guys. She's like... You guys, I know you're using oxygen tanks, but I'm just going to quick go over to this, like, ice cap and change my frozen yeah. tampon. It's, it's days like, like today. I wear the wings. Yeah, because... it's like, you know what? I doubled down because I was prepared. Yeah. The guys are like, my hands hurt from my mittens not being warm. Yeah, I'm low on yeah. oxygen. She's well, like, I've learned to evolve. Yeah, the string has now turned do. into an icicle, so <laughs> I'm enjoying that situation. So for our mom box, I would like to talk to... Uh, a number of uh, 55 to 65 plus women who um, unfortunately <laughs> have been <laughs> getting our feed. Mom box. Here's one. Here's one. I love it so much. This woman sent a message unintentionally. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was. Maybe it was intentional. I have no idea. Her name's Susan. Hi, Susan. And she has a picture of what looks like a Great Pyrenees for her profile picture. And all she sent to us was, "Do not recommend." Dot dot dot. These ladies have such potty mouths. <laughs> okay, hold on. Is that my aunt? I don't know, Susan. Do you have an aunt named Susan? I do. Okay, um, hold on, I gotta find them. They're so great. Uh, Barbara B, just no thanks. Just no I don't thanks. understand. Oh, so it's us I being recommended to people and they're saying they don't like us? Maybe. I don't know what it is, but I mean, you know. That's a fantastic statistic. Um, some, you know, most of the people, they send really nice stuff. Kitty, uh, <laughs> Kitty, Kitty Crossfield Davis. How do I delete this? <laughs> so, Kitty, I hear you. I don't. I get it. I wish. That's how I'll, I feel I'll about mess- myself most days, Kitty. <laughs> There's so many things so in my day. I'm like, I'd like to delete that. It is not just our children who have had it with it was, us. It's, there's many people out there that too, have had Kitty. it with us. You know. All right. And then Howdy from Grandpa Ernie. Okay. Well, Ernie's always so, like, "Hey, show us your butt." And we're like, "Don't ever stop sending these messages, you guys, ladies, because they really." Give me many giggles. Also, I bet they don't know in a million years that it actually goes to us. Yeah. They're like, I don't want to see. It's like when we started I Mom So Hard and there was that woman who asked me, she literally, how did she get, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. We'd started I Mom So Hard. I think I've told this story a million times, but it's one of my favorites. We'd started I Mom So Hard. We got, we hit like a million followers very fast and when we built the page, Jen and I not being the tech geniuses that we are nope. right now. Oh, super, yeah. Super techie. Yeah. Um, it said, do you have a phone number? And I was like, I sure do. It's my phone number. And I put my phone number yeah. on our Facebook page, not realizing that anybody would actually, it never occurred to me that there would be a million people. So I forgot. Yeah. And then sure enough, there's this woman in, in South Carolina and she did not enjoy getting this is when the the floodgates were open and everybody was getting all of our yeah. videos all of the time and so she literally called me at 4 a.m. which was like 6 a.m. her time and she was like ah uh, yeah are you the lady from my mom so hard and i was like yeah yes yes ma'am she's like well I just think I'm getting too many of your posts, and I would really like to unfriend you, but okay. I don't know how. Can you help me with that? Talk you through that. And my yeah. son told me not to call you, but I don't know how else to get you off my feed. Well, and I said, "Yes, ma'am. Can I, can I call you back?" And she said, "Yep. What time?" I said, "Can Can I call you back when it's six a.m. my time, and then I'll help you unfriend me?" And she goes, "Yep. I'll be expecting your call." <laughs> so I called her back and I walked her through how to unfriend us. There you go. How nice, Miss Dixon. Oh, Miss Dixon. Dixon. Yep. Miss Dixon and Kitty should hang out. Yeah. You uh, guys cannot like us. That's okay. Yeah. That's, uh, you could just get, uh, You're get not a group kids. together with our kids. and We expect them to fake it a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Because we buy them shit. Yeah. So that's our podcast, that's you guys. That's our podcast. 